we're in the truck and it's raining and raining and raining and raining. It has rained so much we have went through water and even on the interstate there's a little bit of water. We are heading to Florida. I went to, I was going to tell you guys that I went to a um, breast surgeon that does the, um, you know, like the plastic surgeon on Friday and I showed him the area of my breast. I, I don't know if y'all remember me talking about how it kind of looks like I got cleavage. And he said that it was not the muscle in my breast and that he just thought it was fatty tissue and that he would do a uh, liposuction if he wanted me to. And I said, no, that's fine. Me and Chris are trying to lose weight. So we left there and I told Chris, I said, I just don't feel right about that area. It don't feel right to me. I think I should have a seat about. So we went to um, a breast doctor on Tuesday. Um, and it, my regular breast doctor wasn't in the office that day, so I went to see a man. And I told him plainly, hey, this area feels like it did the first time I had cancer. It feels like like it's thick, like scar tissue. I said, so I want you to do an ultrasound and I want you to do a needle biopsy. And he didn't take too kindly, I don't think, in me telling him what I wanted him to do. But I don't think that should matter because I am a survivor and he should listen to a woman if she feels like something's going on. So, I know I'm bouncy, but we're on the interstate. So, anyway, we, uh, he got out the ultrasound machine, and he started looking, and he said he didn't see anything, that it was just soft tissue, that I had nothing to worry about, and that I could come back and see him in six months. So, I wasn't happy with that answer. I wasn't happy with the fact that he didn't, couldn't find anything, and that he didn't do a needle biopsy. Okay, I'm updating on everybody on my breast doctor visit. So I went out to the front desk and I was complaining and I said, look, he couldn't find what I've been feeling with that ultrasound machine. And I'm just not real happy with that. If Dr. Robbins had been here, she would have been able to find it. And so that young girl said, do you want to make an appointment with Dr. Robbins? And I said, I sure do. And she said, well, you can come back and see her tomorrow at 145. So we got out to the car and I asked Chris, I said, um, what do you think about what I did? And he said, well, uh, doctors don't really like for you to come in and tell them what they need to do. He said, so he was probably a little offended by that. He said, and you know those doctors work together, so he'll probably tell her he couldn't see nothing. She might not do anything either. And so when I got home, I gave her nurse a call, and her nurse said, look, if you're not comfortable with what was done today, the doctors are very different. Come in tomorrow at 1.45 and we'll take a look. Y'all, when I got there, Dr. Robbins walked in there with me. I told her what was going on. I told her that it felt just like it did when I had cancer before. And she's the doctor that found my cancer before. She was very nice. She didn't mind me telling her what I wanted her to do. She didn't mind me you know, expressing how uh, important it was to me. And y'all, she got out that ultrasound machine and she found uh, an area that looks just like it did when they found my cancer um, eight years ago. And she didn't have any problem finding that uh, it looks like a little tumor uh, on that ultrasound. And she said, do you see that right there? And I said, yes. She said, well, okay, I can't do a uh, core because I don't want to bust your implant, but I can do a fine needle aspiration. And I said, okay. And she got out her needle. She told me to watch it on the ultrasound. I got to watch her use the needle, go in, pull out the fluid out of the tumor, uh, and she's going to send it off. Now, did that say 
said, we are on our way to Florida. We're taking a break because, y'all, it looked positive to me. And the last time I was in her office and she thought everything looked great, she said, you know, there's nothing to worry about. It looks good to me. This time she didn't. She said, you come back and see me in a week. Now, it doesn't mean that it will be for sure. It doesn't mean that it'll be the same kind that it was before. I know these glasses are glaring. But uh, either way, me and Chris are a little nervous. And, you know, we're a little down about it because he just retired. And um, it will be on my chest wall. It's just right up here, y'all. Just right here is where it is. Um, so we won't find out until Wednesday whether or not it's positive. Uh, I'm not one to pray for healing. And I know a lot of y'all believe in all that. And I know God can heal me. I think God can do anything. But I just don't like to tell him what I want. I like for him to choose what he wants for me. Uh, just because I want to live don't mean that uh, he might not think it's time for me. Uh, in other words, I'm happy with whatever God decides to do with my life. And I trust him wholeheartedly. And I don't worry about dying so much as a lot of people would. But I, I ain't going to lie. I don't want to die right now. I would rather stay with my husband and my kids, especially since he just retired. And I know I'm talking kind of morbid, but y'all, it just looked positive to me. And I've seen cancer. I know what it looks like. I don't have a good feeling about it. Normally, when I don't have a good feeling, I'm usually right. And I just want y'all to know this. I will tell y'all first thing when I know something. If she calls me and says, honey, that was just a fibroid cyst. And everything's great. Uh, hopefully, that's the call I'll get. I'll let y'all know. But... I want y'all to understand something because this happened to me the first time and that is when you feel something in your body that is not quite right you need to have it checked out immediately because when I first feel my cancer eight years ago I was uh, I had an area in the bottom of my breast that was thick feeling. It felt just like some scar tissue. I went, had a mammogram. They said, and I had already started getting one in the top of my breast too. I'd had the one on the bottom for a while. And I did the mammogram and they said everything looks good. And I had two simple cysts in the top parts of my breast. This was December. Uh, Miss Robbins, the same doctor I went to, needled those. They were negative. So even if I knew those areas were there, even if I knew that they felt thick, I didn't speak up and say, look, I want you to just look at these two areas specifically. I didn't do that. I just did like a lot of us do and thought, you know what? I'm good to go. The mammogram was good. She needled those cysts. They're negative. I'm not going to worry about it. And then that spring, I was eat up with cancer. Uh, I had an area on the bottom with four simple cysts around it, which caused it to make it itch and hurt. And then I had an area on the top, and it was triple negative. And then I had 12 lymph nodes with cancer in them. And I truly believe that cancer was there when I had my mammogram in December. So what I'm trying to tell y'all is just like what I did this week. When a doctor looks at you, if you know something is not feeling right, and they want to write it off and act like you know you're young or no, it's fine, it's just soft tissue like that doctor told me two days ago, and you don't feel right about it, you go and get a second opinion. Because if I had listened to that man, I would have waited six months before I went back to see him. And if this come back and it's positive like the triple negative that I had the first time, it grows at a 90-something percentile rate. And if I had listened to that man and waited six months, it would have been bad. So always, always go with your gut feeling. Even if you don't like it, even if you are scared, even if you don't want to do it like I did the first time. I've always felt guilty because I knew those areas were there and I did it, you know, I wasn't persistent enough about it. And that caused me to be a stage 3C 
cancer person. You know, and I've had mammograms every year since I was about 27 years old because I've got cancer. My grandmother had cancer. And I've always had a lot of sample cysts. So what I'm trying to tell y'all is don't back down. Never, ever let somebody tell you that it's okay if you've got a feeling that it's not. Go and get a second opinion. Go and put my, my glasses on. Um, because you want to catch it early if it's there. And by gosh, by golly, this time I was going to make sure they looked and found something if it was there. So it did look jagged around the edges. It wasn't nice and pretty and circular. Um, and it was plenty big enough to stick a needle in. When she put her needle in that, you could see the needle go into it, you know, go inside of it, pull out the fluid, come back out, go back in. She pulled out several, you know, little patches. And y'all, he acted like he couldn't see nothing. Why well, don't I know you're on here and I haven't told, um, why well, notice notice Chris's aunt. I have not told Virginia and Bernard yet. I was gonna call them tonight, she's cooking, and I couldn't tell her, so we're gonna call Virginia and Bernard and tell them. Uh, and like I said, it's not for sure, but y'all, it really looked like it did the first time. Um, and you know, I can beat it again if I beat it the first time. Hopefully, if it's back, it's just on my chest wall, and it's not anywhere else in my body. Uh, because it has just been a few days since I had a x-ray of my lungs and they were fine. Uh, so I've got uh, a good feeling about it as far as that goes. I feel like it's going to be positive, but I, I really feel like it's going to be something I can beat. Again, with the Lord's help, of course. And um, so y'all keep me in your prayers and never, ever, ever let a doctor tell you something's okay if you don't feel right about it go get a second opinion okay um so that's just what i wanted to tell y'all um and i'm sure that when chris was sitting there in her office yesterday he was very glad that his wife pitched a little fit and wanted them to do a little more because she didn't seem to have a problem right chris See, he said she didn't have no problem finding it. He said there wasn't nothing there. He said there wasn't nothing there. I'm not kidding, y'all. I even asked him when I got back out in the waiting room, will you look, will you please do a needle biopsy? And he had his nurse come out there and say to me, there is no target. We cannot take a needle biopsy of something that is not there. And then the next day I go in and see Dr. Robbins and it's there plain as day. Isn't that scary, y'all? Isn't that scary when I'm a cancer survivor that he wouldn't be more careful or look more better with an ultrasound than that? Because I'm going to tell you, an ultrasound can find anything. Um, I mean, they can. So, um, anyway, we're headed to Florida. We're take, I know it's bouncy. Good Lord, this road's terrible. Uh, we're taking a break. We're going to get out. We're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to probably go out to eat. We'll try to eat healthy, though. Um, and we're just going to spend some loving time together because we're a little bit nervous that when we come back, um, it may be a new battle for us, but we're going to beat it, hopefully. Y'all just keep us in your prayers. I'll keep you posted if we find out anything, I promise. And um, I hope y'all have a wonderful day. And um, we are going to have fun. Right, Chris? Yeah. We're going to have fun. We're determined. All right. Love y'all. Y'all have a good, good evening. And uh, please, please, please be your body's advocate. Even when you're going through cancer, they tell you not to read on the Internet, not to look at stuff. It just scares you. I don't believe that. I believe you should read. I believe you should look at the latest studies. I've already started doing it to try to figure out which kind of chemotherapy works best for what kind of cancers. Because I'm telling you, the more you learn and the more you know, the better off you're going to be when it comes time for your treatments to know really what they should do.
There's so many women out there that have breast cancer and they don't even know if it's hormone positive, if it's triple negative. They don't, they're so scared they won't ask any questions. And I just do not recommend that because after going through what I've been through with a lot of different things with my health, you need to be your own advocate and you need to be informed and you need to study it and you need to be educated. Girls, check your tatas. The best time to do it is in the shower when you condition your hair. And if you don't condition your hair, buy some conditioner. Because if you will just raise your arms up in the shower and you have that conditioner in your hand, it is amazing how much better you can feel the breast tissue when you have conditioner on your hands. Don't do it with a lotion. Don't do it when you're laying in the bed. Do it in the shower with conditioner. Okay, um, and if anything feels the least bit buffy, go check it out. Uh, because if you, and one more thing, if you have something and you know it's there and you know it feels funny, they will do what they call a diagnostic mammogram. So always ask if you know something's there for a diagnostic mammogram because what that is is a mammogram that if they can't see it good. Uh, but they can feel, you can feel something, they send you directly from the mammogram to the ultrasound. And you lay down on a table, that's when they look. And that's how they found my cancer the first time. Uh, there was a, a large tumor with four simple cysts around it. The mammogram couldn't see anything, so they, they knew that it, you could feel it, so they sent me in the room, opened up the ultrasound, and you could see it plain as day on the screen. So girls, always ask if you find something. Don't ask for a, don't call them and go, I need a mammogram. You call them and say, I need a diagnostic mammogram, okay? Because the earlier you find it, the more chance you got to beat it. All right, I am going to sign off. I'm giving y'all enough of a preaching lesson on breast cancer. If y'all ever have it, if you ever have questions, if you ever want to know something and you're too scared to look it up, I'll look it up for you, and I'll give you some education on what I found. Um, trust me, I will. Uh, Cindy, if you see this, I do believe her name is Cindy. I'm not going to say her last name. Uh, she has breast cancer. She just had it returned. She lives in Douglasville. She went to get her MRI results, and I have not heard back to see how it went, please let me know how it's going. Uh, me and you may be sitting in the chemotherapy room at the same time. You never know. Um, that's where I had my chemotherapy last time was in Douglasville. So y'all just uh, hang tight. We'll know by Wednesday. I love y'all. And if I get a good report, I'll let you know. Um, and while we're down here, we may cook something for y'all because we're going to have a good time. We'll talk to y'all later. Love you. Bye.